Hey everybody, how are you doing? I hope that uh, you're finding this video is going to be helpful for you. This is a uh, overview on the, what formulas to use for activity 231 in the POE PLTW curriculum. So that's 2.3.1 and this is the stress strain problems. So in this particular unit, um, you have a set of problems that are going to be um, needing a few separate formulas and some, in some cases a couple of derivations of those formulas. So let's start with this first problem. Now I just want to also say that the uh, problems that I'm going over here, they are <clears throat> equivalent problems to what is on the activity, although for my students I always change the numbers a little bit so that way people have to do their own calculations. Um, so here is um, one of the first problem here. So <clears throat> the weight of 22,000 newtons is supported by a rectangular base plate, one foot wide, one foot long, the base plate rests in a concrete slab. What is the stress that the plate exerts on the concrete slab? Now, you know that uh, stress is equal to force over area. So here's your standard equation, right? Force over area. But the question here is just basically asking you to find the force, which is given to you, in this case it's 22,000 pounds, and then the area, and since it's a rectangular, rectangular base plate, it's one foot wide, 1.5 feet long. Uh, the original problem does give you one quantity in inches and one quantity in feet, and does ask you then to find <coughs> the units in uh, pounds per cubic inch, uh, sorry, square inch and pounds per square foot. Uh, in this problem, we only have to do the square foot, but the formula is exactly the same. It's force over area. Just make sure you're consistent with your units for your area. So that is how you can do number one. So we move on. Now, the second problem on here is involves a little bit more, more work. This one here is asking you uh, to use the same kind of similar information. You got a diameter rod, quarter inch diameter rod, um, and you suppose a break under normal stress of PSI is 54,000 PSI. Uh, tensile machine can apply no more than 850 pounds of force to the specimen. What is the maximum rod diameter that should be used for the specimen? So basically, it's asking you to find an acceptable diameter for this. So you have to use again the stress. Uh, Fun, uh, stress, stress formula, excuse me, so that's again force over area. Now, in this case though, we're actually trying to find the diameter. So what we want to do is know that the diameter is in the area function. So we're going to flip the area and the stress, and we're going to get area equals force over stress. And then once we do that, we can rewrite this area function in terms of diameter, right, in terms because it's a circle. Um, and notice, also notice that the diameter we're using is something we're finding. Now, the, the, uh, you have to take this rod. The idea is you're supposed to take this quarter-inch rod and cut it down. So you're trying to figure out what you're trying to cut it down to. So the area of a cylinder is pi d squared over, sorry, in this is a circle, excuse me. It's a cross-section circle. So pi d squared over 4, and that's equal to force over stress. So what we do here is we just have to rearrange this formula to get the diameter by itself, which means we're going to multiply by 4, we're going to divide by pi, and we're going to square root. So that means that the diameter is equal to the square root of 4 times f divided by stress times, I should put pi first, but that's okay, times pi. All right, so if you just plug in your force, in this case, the uh, testing machine can apply no more than 850 pounds. Your uh, stress is 54,000 PSI, where it's supposed to break. And then you just uh, plug these numbers in and do the calculation, and that will give you the diameter that you need. The next question here asks what the maximum load is if the uh, steel rod can support a normal stress in the rod and not exceed 28,000 PSI. Uh, in this case, you're going to use a very similar thing, except you're going to do the force this time. So if we rearrange the stress equation, that's going to be stress times area to equal force. And then since, in this case, we're looking for the area, uh, sorry, we're looking for the force and given the diameter, we just do the, again, rearranging here. It's going to be stress times 1 fourth pi d squared. So if we use that formula, then we get the force that we're asked for. So that will solve for number three. All uh, right, so that's the formulas for those two uh, that will help you solve those questions. Now for number four. Now I noticed that on my, uh, my numbering system, I did put three here. It is really the fourth problem, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the formulas here. So in this case, we have a 5-inch wide by 1.25-inch wide thick, tangular, thick, thick rectangular, it's made up new word, steel bar that supports a load of P in tension. So the stress on the bar of P equals 29,000 pounds. Now this is not too bad because stress is just force over area. So we just got to basically do uh, force over area. In this case, the value of P is the force. So we just have to plug in the force here. And we have to do the area, which in this case is base times height. That's for number uh, letter A, excuse me. For letter B, they want to know what's the load that you can support if the actual stress must not exceed 24,000 PSI. So again, this is a force 
here. We know from the prior problem that force is equal to stress times area. So if I now replace instead with the area of a rectangle, that means it's going to be stress times base times height, or use the area that you use from the previous problem, because it's the same thing. OK, so that's number four. Number five. 30-foot-long steel rod subjected to a load of uh, 7,000 pounds. The load causes the rod to stretch by 0.25 inches. What is the mod mod's elasticity? What is the diameter of the rod? Now, uh, this, is a, this is the longest problem as far as how many steps you have to take to get this problem. So you have to do three different steps. The first thing you have to do is you have to find the, mod, uh, the uh, strain, excuse me. So that's strain. That's equal to the original, sorry, elongation divided by the original length, right? So once you find that, you then can use the fact that the modulus elasticity is equal to stress over strain, which since it's stress over strain, right, and now you have the strain, you can rearrange this and get the stress. So the stress would equal the modulus elasticity times the strain, right? So you do those, and now you have the stress, and then finally, you can use that same diameter formula that we used in a prior problem, which is the square root of 4F over stress times pi. And I know I did it again. I should have put pi first, but that's okay. All right, so we can do that, and that will give us the diameter that we're looking for. So again, kind of a three-step problem. So you got to go one, then two, and then three to get the answer to that question. All right, next problem. Number six, got a 120 foot long steel wire, cross sectional area 0.02 inches squared. When you apply force to 270 pounds, its length increases by 0.5. Determine the stress. Okay, well, this is not bad. Stress is standard here, force over area. Just do, this time it's a cylinder, and you got a cross, I'm sorry, but this time they give you the cross sectional area, so you don't have to do any calculations with that. They tell you it's 0.02 square inches, so that's nice and easy, force over area. Then they want the strain. In this case, the strain is equal to the uh, sorry, elongation divided by the original length, which they also give you. Um, do notice, that, of course, however, that the length increases by inches, but the original length is in feet. So you're going to get a very small number here. Don't forget, you got to convert. Uh, in this case, you probably want to convert the, the feet here to inches. And then once you do that, then you're going to get to find the modulus of elasticity, which, as mentioned before, is just straight up stress over strain. So we just take the quantity in A divided by the quantity from B, and that will be your, that's not the not, not best epsilon, but that's okay, seven. So with number seven, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to find, uh, we've got a rectangle steel bar, one inch by three and a half inches, diagonal tension member of trust, it's 15 feet long, its modulus is 30 million PSI, and the strain is measured at 0 .001200. So we're going to find first the actual stress. Now, unlike the previous problems, whenever we asked for stress, we would do force over area. But we don't have enough information to actually use the force over area in this case. So we're going to actually do the, uh, using the fact that we have the modulus elasticity to find it. So uh, in this case, remember, modulus, modulus elasticity is stress over strain. So if I have the, uh, if, I, if I have the strain and I have the uh, modulus of elasticity, I can multiply those two to get the stress. So that means that the stress in this case is equal to modulus of elasticity times the strain, right? So we just do those two and then get that stress. The next question is asking for the tension force. Now here, we uh, remember that we have a derivation of that force is equal to stress times area. In this case, you have to calculate the area separately. You have to do uh, 1 by 3.5 in this case, but uh, your problem obviously will differ, differ uh, differently. It's a rectangular member, so you got to do just base times height. And then the last question is, what is the elongation? So the elongation in this case, remember the uh, strain is equal to elongation over original length. So that means elongation would equal um, the mod, sorry, the strain times the original length. So we got that. All right, so that so we got the elongation of the member here, times that. So that's gonna that's gonna get you that information there. Now, next problem number eight, and nine and ten. So we're gonna see them all on the same page. All right, now in this problem number eight, this this looks 
like it's complex. It's not too bad, but it's just a matter of having to compare certain things. So it wants to know, it's giving you two different wires with two different diameters and they're two different materials. Uh, they're subjected to the same load and you get two different stretches out of each of those. They want, you to, they want to know what has the greater modulus elasticity and which one is the stiffer uh, material. So they're kind of the same question in this in the sense, but in order to get the answer here to finding what the modulus elasticity is, you're first going to have to find two things about each of the wires. The first thing you need to find is the strain. So remember the strain is equal to the elongation over original length. And also notice that the original lengths are the same. They're both 40 feet, except the elongations are different. So you're taking at different values for strain for each one. And then the stress, which, again, that's going to be different because the areas of each uh, are based on the diameters, and the diameters are different for each one. So force over area. So when you find those two things, you then can find the modulus elasticity by doing the stress over the strain. So you have to do that separately for each one. Uh, and then you'll be able to answer the questions that are provided. All right, so that's number eight. Now number nine. A 9,000 pound rod suspended from a roof of a shopping mall. Uh, maximum stress must be limited to that. What's the minimum diameter that may be used for the rod? Okay, so now in this problem, same kind of deal here. Minimum diameter, this time you're given the modulus elasticity, you're given the maximum stress, and you're given the load. So you have enough information here to get some information, uh, so you get some things about the diameter. So now here, the minimum diameter, we know that the area would equal the force divided by the stress. So knowing that, that will allow you to basically find the diameter using that same formula we used earlier. So if I, my memory serves correctly, I could flip a couple pages back if I had to. It's going to be the square root of 4f over pi times stress. There you go, I wrote it the right order this time, pi first, right? Okay, so pi times stress, 4f over that, so that give you the diameter that you need uh, to get that information. Now, um, I don't think that, I think in this case you have kind of a red herring and given that you're being given the, uh, the maximum elongation, um, the modulus elasticity, and so I think that you kind of have to start with this diameter, but then you also then need to um, take that information and make sure that you are given um, well, no, I don't. I don't really don't think you need that. I really think it's more diameter um, on, on this case. In this case, okay. So number ten, last problem: solid circular titanium uh, control rod, seven thousand pounds of actual tension force, stress and monotony, forty-two thousand psi. What's the modulus elasticity? Sixteen million five hundred thousand psi. Rod must elongate no more than 0.2 inches. What is the minimum rod diameter and the maximum rod length? Now, in this case, uh, you are kind of doing the same thing with number nine. You're first finding the diameter minimum diameter that you're uh, allowed, and that's going to be equal to the square root of 4f over pi times the diameter. So again, you're using that same derivation, but then this time here, you're asked for a second part, so you have to do, and I wrote it pi times diameter again, oops, uh, but this time here, you've got to find the, the maximum rod length. So the original rod length here that you're limited to is the stress over, I'm uh, sorry, the strain, no, the elongation over the strain. Okay. So that should give you that information. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the formulas that you will need to do this particular problem uh, set, the problem set. And uh, good luck. I hope that your PLTW class goes well.